Rock's Classic Rock, Q1043. I say good morning to Thomas Robsom, who is with us this morning from Norway. And he is with us because he is the director of AHA, the movie. Okay, so first of all, I have to tell you, I watch a lot of documentaries. My husband usually bails on the documentaries. That said, my husband is not a particular AHA fan. Of course, they're most famous for Take On Me. However, he hung in there the entire movie and thoroughly enjoyed it along with me because this is a snapshot, a picture of, I mean, it, it was really kind of sad because here you have this, this group, AHA, the most famous music group ever to come out of Norway, at least on the pop rock scene. And they brought so much joy to billions of people around the world but they couldn't get along. They can't get along. And they're like a, a document of miscommunication. So first of all, kudos on a wonderful film and so much information I didn't know about this group. But even if they, you don't even have to like music. This is just a human drama. So first of all, Thomas, how did this all come about? Were you just a super AHA fan? Well, um, thank you, first of all. Uh, uh, it, in a way, it started already when I was 10 years old and I watched Let It Be, the film about the Beatles recording a new album. And I was a huge Beatles fan. And so it was so fascinating to see them, you know, while they were making music, you know, to be able to be there. That was really fascinating. And also I was shocked because my heroes actually argued. Um, yeah, that was a very dark film as opposed to, um, you know, the wonderful six, was it a six part? No. Yeah, was it? I can't even remember how many parts, but uh, get back. I mean, it was just extraordinary, like watching that like a fly on the wall. Did you watch all that? Of course, yeah, I did. And well, the strange thing is that when watching Let It Be Again, it, uh, I realized, you know, they only argue for like 90 seconds and, and those 90 seconds are also in the get back version, but, but in get back, of course, you get so much, you know, um, how they jam and how they have fun and how they create music. And you know, one song is actually being made on the spot from, from nothing, get back where Paul starts, you know, and that, that kind of film is what I wanted to make since I started making documentaries. And so for many years, I tried with different groups, you know, in the late 80s, in the 90s, it was hard to finance. Uh, and uh, I didn't see it as an option going for AHA uh, then. But when they came back together um, in 2000, uh, a couple of members started showing up at, uh, at some of my premieres for my feature films, which I either directed or produced. And after one of those premieres in 2009, uh, the band had kind of made the, a new impact, uh, especially in the UK, Germany, other countries with new hits and uh, an album that, that was praised. And that was their ninth album called Foot of the Mountain. And so I thought, this is the right moment. We're now AHA are going to make their 10th album, kind of anniversary, and they are really successful now. This is the moment where we should make the film about AHA while they record a new album. And so I suggested this to um, the keyboard player, uh, Magne, who I knew a little bit. He had been to, to those premieres. And he said, it's a good idea, but there's only one problem. We're not going to make a 10th album. We're going to split up. Uh, so my response was, okay, but call me then when you get back together. Oh, so uh, you knew they would just get back together because yeah. this has been off and on anyway. Yeah, and, and he said, it's never going to happen. <laughs> and then, of course, it did happen. But then they had already made that 10th album. But that was made 
pretty much like Aha have made their last albums uh, separate. You know, they Morton records in Stockholm, uh, Magne records in Oslo, and Paul records in New York. And Morton is the only one that is on all songs because he sings. So that was not the kind of film I wanted to make anyway. So when I started filming finally in 2016, my hope was to get them together to make an album together, even if it was at this point the 11th album. <laughs> that was my dream, you know, I really wanted that to happen. And that's why I started the film asking that question. And as you have already seen, I get three different answers. And one of those- We can't agree on anything. <laughs> No, and one of those answers is clearly no. So during the years I filmed, I, I asked again and again, and unfortunately it never happened during the film. So the film I really wanted to make never happened, but then it ended up more being a film about why it doesn't happen, why a band with such a great success uh, are not able to make music again together. What what happens? And that's that's very much, you know, it's about the rise and the difficulties uh, of you know being pop stars in London, going there when when you know no Norwegian had succeeded ever before. Right. But then as soon as the success came, it also became difficult because they kind of maybe realized you know how they were seen now at this point, you know oh so Morton is getting so much attention as the singer and. Paul is getting so much attention as this, uh, the genius songwriter. And then for, for Max, there's kind of nothing left. Uh, so, so then they started, you know, you know, but, but even before that, you know, Magna didn't even want to be a keyboard player. That's, that's kind yeah, of- Yeah, he fun. wanted to be a guitarist and his good friend Paul says, no, you're going to be a keyboardist. So we see someone who clearly has some control issues. So the backstory that we learn from Aha! the movie, which you can see on VOD as of May 10th, is that Paul and Mags became friends when they were 12 years old, 12 years old. But it was Mags who had the idea what, when he was 15, when he partially wrote Take On Me, he was 15, right? Yeah. But there you have Mags, who doesn't get really any of the songwriting credit for AHA, but he wrote their biggest hit when he was 15. And then you have Morton, the lead singer, who gets all the attention because when you think of the song Take On Me, all you think of is Morton hitting that note. Yeah. We used to joke on air about who was squeezing his balls to get that out of him. But he had a falsetto, and that falsetto is what made the song. So even from the get-go, on their, on their biggest hit, on one of the most iconic songs ever, look at the strife. Yeah, but that's uh, the strange thing in all this is that on that particular song, all three are actually credited. Oh, are because, they? Yeah, on that song, because Max had the riff, uh, Paul wrote uh, the, uh, most of the song, and Morton had his contribution also on the songwriting side. But, you know, you could say that every song that Morton sings on, you know, has something so special that he should always be credited just because of the voice. But, you know, that's that's a discussion that goes on uh, with musicians, you know, who, who gets credited for songwriting. And that's one of the big problems in AHA, definitely. So I'm speaking with Thomas Robesom, and he is the director of AHA, the movie. And you can see that on VOD as of May 10th. Now, again, some things I didn't know. I didn't know that Coldplay and you too were inspired by AHA. Yeah, especially Coldplay. I mean, with, with you two, uh, they kind of, they suddenly in one song, um, uh, you two were singing a line that is very, or the same line as in The Sun Always Shines on TV which is a ha, song, uh, a ha song, and that was number one in England, so, so you two had clearly heard it. You know, I, I don't think they copied on purpose, but it was so alike that they realized themselves, 
you know, um, so they were clearly inspired, but maybe unconsciously. But with Coldplay, they were kids when AHA were big. So they were, you know, clearly inspired and, and said so. And, but many others, you know, you, even Weekend now, you can hear his biggest hit, uh, Blinding Lights, you know, both the Sintriff and the drum programming, you know, is very, very similar to Take On Me. So he has for sure also heard that song, which, I mean, every American has heard that song. Of course. <laughs> like I said, it's an iconic song. It's one of the songs that will just go down in history. A good song is a good song and it lives on. All right. So I had a thought because I saw the documentary and you did too. I think it was some kind of monster, Metallica's wonderful, wonderful documentary. If you haven't seen it, of course, I love Metallica, but I just love this because they basically had a therapist who went on the road with them. So I was thinking to myself and, and did the thought occur to you, Thomas, that this is, this could have solved AHA's problems if they traveled with a therapist, maybe? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, uh, that was suggested by one of the members and uh -huh. another member said, keep your personal problems to yourself. But they're, they're riddled with problems. I mean, the communication, like you said, just from the get-go of the movie, the opening scenes, you're seeing that all three of them can't agree on anything. But I also had another thought for you. I mean, think of the dysfunctional groups. I mean, especially those who are related. Right now, we have the Heart Sisters, who uh, th there was supposed to be a heart tour, and now there's not going to be a heart tour because one wanted to use the musician she used for her solo tour, and it's just insane. And then, of course, Oasis, there's a documentary just begging to be made. How about the Kinks? I mean, this could be a whole career category for you, Thomas. <laughs> yeah, it would be. Would be you would could be, be the dysfunctional rockers whisperer. <laughs> I have to say that all three members you know, are really nice people, you know. Uh, it was really easy to 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 have access to them, but that's separate. You know, as soon as you try to get them in the same room, I, I, I mean, I've never been in the same room with all three, just wow. me and them, never. Uh, it's either with other people or, uh, you know, on uh, on sound checks or, uh, or meet and greet behind the scenes or interviews, but I've, I've never sat down with all three, you know, even to speak about the film and how I wanted to make this film. Uh, so that, that's, that's kind of funny. Um, but that's how they, the, the, they are, they have, they have issues with each other, definitely. I'm not sure if they're ever going to be solved. Uh, but in the meantime, at least they, they have managed now to make a new album. They kind of made it as soon as I stopped my cameras. So. Oh, that, damn for you. I'm looking forward to that album anyway, and um, and you know, as I said, they they are they are great people and they are really talented. It's just a pity that they don't get along. By the way, uh, so what you know, we briefly talked about Get Back. Get Back has really just risen the whole profile of music documentaries. You made this movie at exactly the right time. We're talking about the movie, Aha! The Movie, which goes to VOD on May 10th. But what was your reaction watching Get Back? I have to tell you, I, I co-host a morning show here at America's Most Listened to Rock Station, Q104.3 in New York City. And for a while, virtually Every celebrity who came through the door, that's all they wanted to talk to us about. They couldn't stop talking about Get Back. When I watched the end, I was just filled with tears. I was just sad. So what was your reaction as a viewer? Well, I, I loved seeing it. I was you know, thinking how strange it is that all this great material have been buried for so many years just because at some point, it was decided, you know, that the film needs to be this length, and and then you, you have fantastic material that could go on forever. And I, I know a few people got a little bit bored. You probably have to be a 
Beatles fan or a big music fan to enjoy it. But but if you are, it's just incredible, you know, to you just can't get enough. Go. And you actually want the director's cut. <laughs> Speaking of which, last question, because we're out of time. How many hours did you shoot? I don't remember, but it was quite a lot. I, I would have wanted to be on the road with them even longer. I, mm. We had to go home while the hardcore fans had money to follow them uh, further. Uh, but that's, that's part of the financing where it's really hard to fully finance and then just decide, okay, three months. Because if I had been with them you know, for a longer period of time, I might have gotten even something more out of them so so that that's the only regret but uh, we filmed probably 100 hours and then you have so much archive to go through of course so yeah it's uh, the editing took almost a year oh my god aha the movie on vod may 10 thank you so much thomas robesom if you missed any part of this download the iheart radio app it's free my interviews live on with the podcast sunstein sessions i'll see you guys tomorrow morning on the jim kerr rock and roll morning show q104.3 new york's classic rock q104.3